find that there's, there's a complete uh, whitewash of the root cause of the problem. It's always becoming, it's being projected as a problem of land, of an occupier who's come and occupied. So the problem is that when do you start the occupation? Do you start the occupation in 40, 48 with Zionism? Do you start the occupation with Arabs taking over what was Jewish land? You know, how far back in history do you go before saying who did this land belong to? So, do you, what is your view on it? Does Israel have a proper claim on this land? You see, with all that infighting and fighting which has taken place here uh, over the last 75 years, I think it was a mistake which the West did by giving this or promising this kind of a land to both the Arabs and the Jews. And then the Brits, Balfour Agreement, they, they, when they found it untenable because they wanted to use the Jews for their first world war industrial kind of a revolution and the money which the Jews could give it to them. And they wanted to use the Arabs to throw out the Turks, the Ottoman Empire. So, if that was the backdrop, they used both the Jews and the Arabs and they promised both of them that this is the land, this is yours, we'll give it to you after that. Now, 43, the French got out of Lebanon, gave uh, independence to Lebanon. And, and, and I think around the same time, 45, 46, the Brits also wanted to get out of that place. And after the World War ended and the United Nations came into being, they gave this problem to the UN. And the UN actually, in, in, in consonance with the two-nation theory, said that, okay, 55% of this land, goes to Israel and about 45% of this land goes to the Palestinians and why this disparity of 10% because they had more of the fertile land given to the Palestinians and more of the desert part to, to the Israelis. So that was a kind of a equitable kind of a division of this land. This is 67? No, this was 1948, 48, the UN, the first thing. Now, Israel was in agreement and the birth of Israel took place. He said, fine, I'll take my 55% uh, and we'll live happily. But the fact is, since that time till now, there have been five kind of agreements. There has been an Oslo agreement. There was lately an agreement which was backed by the US, which was going to be signed between Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel, which has got scuttled, to some, uh, almost scuttled now that uh, this, this thing has happened. But the fact remains that they were, they came close to settling it down, whether it was between the Zak Rabin and uh, Arafat, whether it was backed by the Israel, uh, by the Egyptians, where of course uh, their president got murdered or, or assassinated, and similarly Zak Rabin, in spite of getting the peace prize, both Yasser Arafat and they got the peace prize as part of that Oslo agreement accord of 1993, uh, the fact is that this didn't happen. And it didn't happen because the Arabs didn't let it happen. It is the Palestinians who didn't let, who it, didn't let, let it happen. So you can't wish it away. It is there in black and white. But the fact is they that keep claiming otherwise. they keep claiming otherwise. But over a period of time, now Israel, as more and more Israelis or Jews started coming into uh, their promised land, they needed more space and that is why what was originally the West Bank is not even one third of what was promised to the Palestine. So there are illegal settlements, I would say. There is a little kind of a move uh, towards the east by the… Were they, were they instigated by Israel or was it provocation which led to just like say for example, um, uh, Russia um, occupying Crimea. I don't know if I can draw that parallel, but was it because of instigation or was it out of… You see, Israel's when, 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 expand, when two expansionist players, Israel or no, Israel was not expansionist. Never. Israel was protecting its land. Israel was always wanting to have two nations, okay. and secure, recognized borders, and that is why you will find that those two million of Arab Israelis who are staying within Israel, they don't have. Uh, there are certain restrictions for them, but the fact is they are very happy. There has been no kind of a popular uprising from within Israel because they have seen what is happening in with their other cousins which are in West Bank or in Gaza. So the fact is that if you agree, uh, if, if, if you draw a parallel, then Israel is right 
in what its stance is. The fact is that no Arab country wants a democratic Palestine. Mm -hmm. Jordan wants a Palestine which is under their control. That is the West Bank part of it. Egypt wants, it, it talked of a United Arab Republic. It looked at a little bit of democracy. But then the Muslim Brotherhood happened and all that thing got scuttled. But it wants to influence Gaza Strip because as a buffer, because they know what happened when Sinai got lost and the Israelis had gone right up to... Basically Israel. fodder. Palestinians are fodder are for fodder. the Arab world. They don't want democracy. There are kings, there are prince, princes, there are autocracy, there is theocracy, but there is no democracy in the Arab world. So it would be very naive to presume that they would want a democratic Israel to survive alongside a democratic Palestine. And that is what uh, the Palestine Authority is actually. So I wanted to use this uh, hook to go to Hamas's, Hamas's charter. So it says Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it obliterated others before it. Its definition of the movement, Article 1, the Islamic resistance movement, which is actually Hamas, uh, the program, our program is Islam. From it draws its ideas, ways of thinking and understanding of the universe, life, life and man. It resorts to it for judgment in all its conduct and is inspired by it for the guidance of its steps. Um, it then goes on to claim that we are part of Muslim Brotherhood, which is a <laughs> pan-Islamism uh, right there. That we are absolutely clear that Jews are our enemy, and uh, Quran actually openly says that uh, Jews and the Kafir and the uh, what does it say? The Jews and generally also for Kafirs that they are the worst of all creation. Do you think so, uh, Hamas is the only organize, I would say terrorist organization in in the neighborhood vicinity of uh, of Israel which does not propagate a two-nation theory. They want to annihilate Israel, the Jews. So in a way, they are against the Palestinian civilians or the people, Arab, who are there. The fact is, Hamas is not only bad for Israel, Hamas is bad for Palestinians, and Hamas is bad for the world.